subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder we have got one question here asking us about an angiogram of a patient who has occlusion of the costal cervical trunk now that is going to reduce the blood flow in specific regions specifically as you talk about costal it is the rib region cervical means the neck region then they are mentioning this obstruction is going to reduce the blood flow in which of the following arteries and the names given are some thoracic artery and the cervical arteries we need to look at the territory of costal cervical trunk before we could reach our answer here in the given options and we are looking at the front view of the head and neck region some of the vessels which are coming from the heart are being shown here the heart will be giving us the arch of aorta and from the arch of aorta we have got brachiocephalic trunk towards the right side the brachiocephalic trunk will be giving us the right subclavian artery whereas the left subclavian artery is a direct branch from the arch of aorta now we have to focus upon the branches from the subclavian artery the subclavian artery is being covered by a muscle which is called as scalenus anterior muscle dividing the artery into three parts proximal to the muscle is the first part of subclavian artery deep to the muscle is second part of subclavian artery and distal to the muscle is the third part of subclavian artery the first part of subclavian artery will be giving us three branches remembered by the mnemonic with branches let us enumerate them here now the v is the vertebral artery coming from the first part of the subclavian artery will be ascending up and contributing to the circle of willis to supply the brain let us demarcate this artery and then we can talk about the eye as well in the wit branches the eye is internal thoracic artery going downwards to supply the thorax region so internal thoracic artery and in the wit the t is thyro cervical trunk supplying the thyroid gland and the cervical region the neck region now this thyro cervical trunk itself will be giving three branches remembered by the mnemonic sit branches so first part of subclavian artery giving us the wit branches v for vertebral artery i for internal thoracic artery t for thyro cervical trunk the thyro cervical trunk itself giving us sit branches which can be seen here as for suprascapular artery participating in scapular anastomosis i is the inferior thyroid artery supplying the thyroid gland and when we are talking about the t it is the transverse cervical artery running transversely in the neck region we have to remember the inferior thyroid artery will be giving one ascending cervical artery in the neck region so you can mention here from the inferior thyroid artery we are getting the ascending cervical artery that was one option in our question the ascending cervical artery ascend in the neck region is a branch of inferior thyroid artery now coming to the second part of the subclavian artery deep to the scalenus anterior muscle we have got the costal cervical trunk our question was asking about the blockage of costal cervical trunk let us first demarcate the artery here the costal cervical trunk coming from the second part of the subclavian artery under cover of scalenus anterior muscle as the name is suggesting it is going to supply some of the costa rib region and the cervical the neck region we can remember two branches from this artery the costal branch is actually superior intercostal artery which will be supplying branches to the upper two intercostal spaces in the thorax region whereas the cervical branch is deep cervical artery which we can mention here the deep cervical artery is going to supply the neck region in the deeper aspect and when it comes to the third part of the subclavian artery distal to the scalenus anterior muscle we have got a branch dorsal scapular artery which is going to participate in scapular anastomosis but our focus should remain upon the costal cervical trunk let us draw this diagram ourselves now we start by drawing the diagram of the heart and the heart is giving us the arch of the aorta the arch of aorta is giving us three branches which we can show here and if we are talking about their names we can see it is going to be the brachiocephalic trunk the first branch of the arch of aorta the second branch is the left sided common carotid artery whereas the third branch from arch of aorta 
is a left sided subclavian artery then what about the right sided subclavian artery a right sided subclavian artery is coming from brachiocephalic trunk which itself is dividing into two and we can see one of the branch is called as right sided subclavian artery and the other branch coming from the brachiocephalic trunk is the right sided common carotid artery so right sided common carotid artery is coming from the brachiocephalic trunk whereas the left sided common carotid artery come directly from the arch of aorta our focus is actually upon the subclavian artery here which itself was covered by a muscle scalenus anterior muscle dividing the artery into three parts so let us cover this artery with the muscle then Name of the muscle, scalenus anterior muscle. Dividing the subclavian artery into three parts. This is the first part of subclavian artery proximal to muscle. Second part of subclavian artery passes deep to the muscle. And third part is distal to the muscle. Then we mentioned the first part of subclavian artery will be giving us three branches. Remembered by the mnemonic, wit branches. In the wit branches, the V is going up the vertebral artery supplying the circle of villus. Whereas the I is internal thoracic artery supplying the thorax region descending down and then we have the T transverse cervical artery this transverse cervical artery itself will be giving three branches which are enumerated as sit branches let us talk about the sit branches then in the sit branches there is one suprascapular artery participating in scapular anastomosis and then the I is the inferior thyroid artery supplying the thyroid gland and in the sit branches, the T is transverse cervical artery running transversely in the neck region. So, first part of subclavian artery giving the wit branches, in which the T itself, the thyrocervical trunk itself, giving the sit branches, suprascapular, inferior third artery, transverse cervical artery. We also mentioned it is the inferior third artery supplying thyroid gland, is giving one branch which is ascending in the neck region, hence ascending cervical artery. And then we can come towards the second part of the subclavian artery and the cover of scalenus anterior muscle is given costal cervical trunk as you talk about costal cervical trunk it is going to supply the costal region and the neck region giving two branches as we can enumerate the superior intercostal artery and the deep cervical artery and that was our question. Our question was asking about the blockage in costal cervical trunk. So if the costal cervical trunk is blocked, there'll be ischemia in the upper intercostal spaces because of the decreased blood flow in superior intercostal artery plus in the neck region also due to decreased blood flow in the deep cervical artery. And then we can also talk about the dorsal scapular artery, which is coming from the third part of the subclavian artery. So this will be the dorsal scapular artery participating in scapular nastamosis. We need to remember subclavian artery as it crosses the outer border of first rib will enter the axilla and will be called as axillary artery. So crossing the outer border of first rib this artery has now entered into the axilla to become the axillary artery and the first part of axillary artery gives the superior thoracic artery to supply the thorax region. That option was also in our question. Superior thoracic artery come from the first part of axillary artery, whereas internal thoracic artery come from the first part of subclavian artery. Both of them supply the thorax region and also the mammary gland on the thorax region. Mammary gland is a highly vascular structure, not only receiving these two branches, but multiple other branches as well. So what about this block when you have a block in the costo cervical trunk as our patient is having which arteries will have decreased blood flow they are deep cervical artery and the superior intercostal artery let us search for these options in our question and as we see there is one angiogram taken and due to occlusion in the costo cervical trunk costa is the rib region cervical is the neck region there will be some decreased blood flow in some arteries due to this obstruction so which arteries are having decreased blood flow as you can see the branches which were given by the costal cervical trunk were the costal branch superior intercostal artery supplying the upper two intercostal spaces and the cervical branch was the deep cervical artery supplying the neck region in the deeper area 
So you can search for those branches and the option is available. Our answer is choice number D. It is the deep cervical artery. Then what about the superior thoracic artery? We have learned superior thoracic artery and internal thoracic artery. They supply the thorax region including the mammary gland. If it is the superior thoracic artery, it is coming from the first part of the axillary artery. And if you are talking about the internal thoracic artery, it is coming from the first part of the subclavian artery. Then what about the transverse cervical artery? Talking about that, we have understood subclavian artery is giving us bit branches from the first part and in the bit branches, it is the T which is giving us the sit branches. And in those sit branches, the T is transverse cervical artery. So as you are talking about the transverse cervical artery, transverse cervical artery is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk coming from the first part of subclavian artery. V is the vertebral artery, I is the internal thoracic artery, T is the transverse cervical artery itself giving us the suprascapular artery and the I is the inferior thyroid artery. And it was the inferior third artery which was giving one branch in the neck region upward, namely the ascending cervical artery. Hence, you can see option number C, the ascending cervical artery is actually a branch of the inferior thyroid artery. Ascending cervical artery is a branch of the inferior third artery, is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk. So as you have understood, the only possible answer here is choice number D, the deep cervical artery.